Well, CBI gives oral assurance to Delhi High Court that they will not summon Samir Vankare tomorrow on the condition that he writes to the CBI and asks the summoning to be deferred till Monday, 22nd of May. Let's tell our viewers the backstory here where CBI probe has revealed that the former NCB officer, Samir Vankare and others conspired to extort 25 crore rupees from Shah Rukh Khan's family for helping Aryan Khan, or letting him off rather, in the alleged drug seizure case of 2021. The FIR filed by CBI alleges that the deal was later finalized at 18 crores and a token of 50 lakh rupees was paid and taken by independent witness K.P. Gosavi and his aide. Joining me here on the program this evening, Yashuvardhan Azad, former IPS officer. Very good evening, Mr. Azad. Good to have you with me here on the show. Big updates coming in. Mr. Vankari has managed to get an interim protection from the Delhi High Court. He cannot be summoned now till 22nd of May. First, your quick response to this development. Uh, and then we'll, of course, come to the larger issue as well, Mr. Azad. Well, I suppose uh, Mr. Vankhade needs more time for preparation because CBI uh, questioning is going to be a grueling session. So I think he's uh, probably uh, giving some time to himself. I have nothing to say about this because High Court must have examined it and then given uh, uh, this direction that he may be, you know, uh, left till Monday. But it's all the same. I think the CBI inquiry will be thorough and I hope uh, it, it culminates into punishment for this gentleman. Right. But, you know, if you look at the charges now and more and more skeletons tumbling out of his closet, extortion, criminal intimidation, selective targeting, and now there is an angle of disproportionate assets, an avalanche of charges against uh, Mr. Vankare. Uh, and if agencies are led with, you know, a corrupt person like him, it will be hugely damaging. One can just imagine what the repercussions of that will be. Well, it's extremely shocking, uh, first of all, to have a gentleman of this kind leading the Bombay NCB. I mean, uh, if I were the DG, I don't think a man like him would ever be posted. And it's not only because of what he did later, but because of his, he broke all the canons of investigation, um, you know, behavior, whatever you say. And uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I think the most serious thing is why did the NCB headquarters, you know, step in at that particular time? Because the kind of things which are happening at that particular, uh, you know, uh, time when, when this was being investigated, his repeated interviews, his, his calling, his making a joke of the FIR and, and the botching up investigation, look at his witnesses, uh, the yes. kind of attempts uh, that he was making to convince uh, uh, the media and everyone alike that he's a lone crusader mm. who's battling, you know, as if the world of drugs, which is paralyzing Ho uh, Bollywood. So, you know, all this uh, uh, was going on and on. And I think the NCB stepped in late. And you're very right. If such mm. people uh, lead investigations... Yes. then it's, it's a very sad tale for the country. Like you said, Mr. Azad, the rot runs deep and look at the modus operandi. It almost sounds like a kidnapping racket. You would arrest people and demand ransom. And by all, uh, you know, uh, accounts and for all accounts and purposes, this may not be the only case then because he was constantly uh, nabbing uh, big names. He wanted to be in the headlines, and my colleagues, in fact, who report uh, on crime tell me that he was extremely approachable. He would call up and inform about his latest catch. So here is a man, you know, now the very agency he worked for has come after him, and it's the NCB's internal probe that has thrown up all the dirt. Yes, it's, it's the Internal Inquiry Committee which has uh, held him liable for all this. And uh, as you pointed out, there are, there are a series of things, you know. First is watching up the investigation itself. Why were some of the people who were there in the FIR were let out? I mean, what kind of uh, investigation was this? And number two, the disproportionate assets is a different thing altogether. Extortion is the third thing. And then bringing to disrepute the organization by having those kind of witnesses mm -hmm. and, uh, and allowing them to do all kinds of things, you know, arresting people, carrying them in the cars. So I think there are a host of things uh, for which he's liable. And uh, the CBI uh, will, will have a lot to really investigate in this because there are so many things to be looked at.
But how could he operate with such impunity? I mean, there has to be complicity and collusion at various levels, you think? And I also want to ask you, Mr. Yashwardhan Naza, that why would he target the top star, movie star of the country and his son? Do you really think it was all about the money that he wanted to extort or there could be more than what meets the eye here? Well, I would say that uh, in Hindi, we call this uh, such fellow as Badabola. You know, always trying to be in the limelight, always trying to impress people uh, with what you are not actually. So definitely the first thing is, say, his appointment there itself is a suspect. Now, uh, I, I may venture to add also that the way he was doing and these things with impunity, he thought that he will get away with it. Now, I don't want to go beyond that, whether there's a direct uh, yeah, uh, reference to, to the powers that be or indirect. I, I won't uh, venture. I think the CBI would uh, make the matters clear. But his problem was that his targeting of, uh, uh, well, the, 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 the first family in the, in the Bollywood was certainly with an intention to extort money because he thought he'd get away with it. But mm -hmm. then if you see that the list of clientele that he had, whether it's Deepa Padukone, whether it's, you know, some innocent uh, actress or, or some, uh, you know, innocent uh, actor who were... You know, even if they're consuming three or five grams, I mean, they can't be a drug cartel member. I mean, and, and there is yes. a provision in NCB that if there are such small amounts, they should be referred to rehabilitation because they are doing it for their own use. They're not doing for any commercial purpose. All this is, you know, <laughs> mentioned because NCB otherwise is a tough act. And that is why they have given this provision. Just to overlook all this and carry on with your central theme or agenda, is something shocking which even I can't understand. And maybe CBI will give us some answers of that. Yes, we do hope CBI will give us some answers. In, in, in his own defense, uh, Mr. Vankhade says that he's being targeted for being a patriot. So one fails to understand uh, how he can invoke patriotism in this. But like you said, uh, there, there's a lot that will unravel from here on and we are just waiting to get more information to fill those gaps. Thanks very much, Mr. Yashwardhan Azad, for joining us here this evening.